In this video we're going to have a look at adding additional states and transitions to this behavior to uh, build a simple fighting behavior for the character. So I've got the fight idle state here already and I'm going to add three more states in uh, each that will have clip nodes with animations. All of them start with uh, the word fight at the start of the animation. So to select all those at once I'm going to use this wildcard box down here. I'll just type F and you'll notice it immediately pre-highlights uh, all the items that it found that start with F and that's all the all the animations that we want. So I'm just going to press the select button and actually select those and this one, the fight idle, we've already added so I'm going to hold the control key and click that one and remove it out. So now I've got the three animations I want and when I say OK it'll create three new states with those animations uh, assigned to the clips. So now I want to rename the states so that they have meaningful names. So I'm going to highlight the states branch right here and press the 3 key on the keyboard. And that expands that level of uh, asset view three levels out so that I can see the animation names beneath each one. And that allows me to come in here and rename these. So I'm going to do that really quick. This one will be kick. This one will be punch. And this one will be slip left. Next thing we want to do is add some state to state transitions. State to state transitions connect two states. The existence of a transition allows one state to blend into the other. And each transition is assigned to what's called an event. When the event is raised, it indicates that the transition should be taken. Your game code can raise events programmatically and thus move the character between two states. You can also raise events inside HBT to test the transitions. So let's do that right now by putting a transition between idle and punch. To do that, you use this little region on the right side of the state. It's called the tr create transition region and you just left click on it and drag to the state you want to create the transitions to, transition to and so I'll just let go of the mouse when it's over punch. You can see it created this idle to punch uh, transition. And if we look in the asset view, here's, here's the idle to punch transition. You'll notice first that it named the transition based on the states that it connects. So it's worthwhile to spend the time renaming your states so that when it creates the transitions they have meaningful names. If you look underneath the transition, you'll see that it's assigned an event with the same name, idle to punch. And you can see that event down here in the events branch as well. So if you want to test this transition inside HBT, you can use shift clicks to, to do that in the graph view. So you notice that idle is has a green border around it, and that indicates that it's the state that's going to play when I simulate and it's the state that's going to play because it's selected. And so let me come over here in the viewport and click the simulate button and the character starts, starts to idle. Now if I want to transition to punch I just hold the shift key down and left click on the punch state. And you'll see that now the character's throwing punches. If you notice the arrow highlighted briefly during the transition and then now the green highlight is around punch. What that, what the shift clicking did was actually raise the event idle to punch. And you can see that another way by actually selecting the event here and, and I'll simulate and I'll press this raise button. And when I do so, you can see it, the transition is taken again. So that's just what shift clicking all of this doing is raising the event associated with that transition to get there. Next thing I want to do is create a few more state to state transitions. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit and rearrange graph view a little. And I want to make a transition over to from idle to fight slip left. So I can just click here and drag. And I need another one from idle to kick. Let me drag that down. And I'd like to have transitions between punch and slip left. So I'll drag from here and release, and drag up from here and release. 
Finally, I'd like to have transitions back from all three of these states up to idle. And a quick way to do that is just to select all three, select the first one and then control click on the other two, and then just drag from any one of the selected states over to the state you want to create transitions to. And you notice it creates transitions from all three of the selected ones uh, back up to the one I dropped onto. So what I want to do now is test this out a little bit. So I'm going to click in an open area of GraphView to select the behavior. And you notice that the idle state gets the green um, playback highlight. The reason it does that is because it's the start state of the behavior. And the start state is indicated with this little triangle in the corner of the state. The start state simply means when, when you simulate this behavior, which state does it start in? And you can assign that by right-clicking on a state and picking Set as Default Start State. And you'll see the, the highlight moves. So I'm going to use shift clicks and transition around this behavior a little bit. I hit the space bar to begin simulating. And I'll head over to Punch, come back to Idle, and shift click on Slip Left, Slip Over, and Slip Back. And I can go to kick and come back. If you look in asset view, you can see the green highlighting taking place there too. So keep your eye on the icons. They'll show you what, what state is active. So I'll start at idle. You notice its icon is green. And I'll go over to punch. Temporarily the transition turns green. And now the punch icon is green. Now I'll go to slip left back to idle, over to kick, and back to idle. So that green icon highlighting tells you which state is active, which state or transition. You can also see that at the top of the uh, viewport where there's a screen label. It tells you that you're viewing this behavior and the active state is idle. And during a transition, if you watch carefully, you'll see it show that the transition is playing briefly. So I'll shift click on punch you see the transition shows up briefly and then the uh, state again. So generally green is used in the throughout the app to indicate what it is that's actively simulating. Last thing I want to do with this behavior is make one more optimization related to the slip left state. So if we look at this, I'm going to simulate it and you'll see the character is basically just the character um, tossing his head off to the left and the idea is that he's ev evading a punch and you don't want him to do that over and over the idea is he slips left to evade the punch and then he goes back to fight idling so ideally you'd like that to happen automatically when you go to the slip left state he does it once and then it automatically transitions back to idle so I'm gonna set that up so that it happens uh, you do that using what are known as triggers or clip events. And you set those up in the clip editor. So I'm going to double click on slip left in the graph view. And that selects the, the uh, clip editor. S selects the clip node and the clip editor appears in the scratch pad. And we've seen the properties tab before. I'm going to go over to the events tab. And this is specifically related to setting up uh, clip events. And you notice there's two timelines up here. And there's there's this one where it starts at zero and goes over to this um, vertical mark here that represents the end of that animation playing and then there's a lower one and this represents uh, time relative to the end of the clip and that's actually what we, what we want we want to create a, a clip event that's automatically raised by the behavior exactly at the end uh, of the animation duration and you can do that by clicking down here on this relative to end timeline. So I'm going to do that just somewhere down here around zero and let go and it brings up the select events dialog to let you pick the event that it's going to raise at that time. And I want to go from slip left back to idle. So I'll pick that one and press OK and you'll see it creates that trigger down here. The relative to end checkbox is set. That means it's down here on this timeline. If I toggle that, you'll notice it just jumps between the two timelines. And the time goes negative. 
So relative to end means this far back from the end of the clip. If I drag here in the editor, you'll see it change the time in the spinner. And there's also a little ghost over here that shows you on the upper timeline where that would be. So what I wanted is exactly right at the end. So this time would be zero, and I can quickly get that by right-clicking on the spinner arrows, and it resets that to zero. So you see the clip, this clip event will be raised right at the very end of the clip, and the little ghost shows right on it over here. So let's try that out. Uh, I'm going to click the idle state here and simulate by pressing the space bar, and I'll shift-click on slip left, and it will play once and then automatically transition back to idle. If you watch in the graph here, you can see that happen.